All right, Sean and Ashton with a Vectorworks tutorial that it's basically for me to remember how to do what I'm gonna show you in a couple of months when I need to do it again, and I've completely forgotten how to do it. So I've got a couple of objects here on the screen with some different classes in them. So right now I've got a kind of a simple set for a theater scene set up, and up above here I've got some kind of architectural element on a class called Grid. So it's the gridiron, it's whatever, something up, up overhead that we don't want to draw. I've also got a wall object in here with a door in it, because I wanna show you a few things about that that are a little, uh, counterintuitive or where it can show the things I'm about to show you uh, I get confused by because of the way that we show dashed wall lines for door and window objects in walls that's totally different than what I'm about to show you uh, and then everything else in the scene here is on a class called set so I want to create a section viewport of this to be a, basically a ground plan some of the things here will be below the cutting plane some will be being cut through the cutting plane and some like these little beam objects here will be above it including the grid which we don't want to show in here also these little crenellations on top of this wall here, which I'll explain at the end what those are all about. I'm going to go ahead and control A to select everything, and then I'm going to turn on the show clip cube on here to throw the clip cube around everything. I'm going to highlight the top of the clip cube, click and scooch it down somewhere, maybe right around in there. That looks, looks whoops, too far. There we go, something like that. I'm going to right click on the pink highlight of that plane and then go down and say create section viewport. Now, everything I'm going to show you, you can do right here as you are creating this viewport, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything by default here and then show you one at a time what all these things are doing. So I'm gonna say okay right now and I've put another viewport right on top of the one that is basically showing it the way that I want. So just to be clear, I went in and changed the uh, default, it's black in 2020, uh, fill for section cutting planes uh, to an old school crosshatch, just so you could see a little bit better what's going on with the line weight. So I've got the objects that are being cut through exactly what I want, being section cut, heavy outline. And then I've got the normal line weight for the steps of my platform below the cutting plane. But I do see these objects floating above my set and the top of my little lentil here or whatever for my little archway thing is being drawn correctly, as is the opening for the, the door in the wall object in the back. So, but if I go over here to the one that I just created, it's close to that. Let me get it a little more centered. So I've got the symbol of the door showing here. It's a little messed up, but um, we'll fix some of that. I've got the section cut and the fill nicely, but I don't have any of those overhead objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that viewport over here. And obviously the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is come down over here to this little button that says extends above the cut plane. I forget when this first showed up, maybe 18 or 19. Um, it's not been around forever, but here it is in 2020. So I'm gonna check this little checkbox that says display extends above cut plane. Great, so I gotta refresh here. I'm gonna update and nothing happened really. So what's up with that? Well, obviously it's got something to do here with these two little buttons that are directly below that checkbox. So let's go ahead and click open this object display and see what we've got going on here. And we get another very uh, counterintuitive or, or unclear uh, Vectorworks uh, pop-up window here that it doesn't really make it clear what you're supposed to do. So what I did initially was created a class dash that I was trying to set this to just, just like I do for the door objects over here. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna jump back over here to the design layer. This is not what you do, but when we're in top plan view here with a door object in a wall, I'll go ahead and select that object, I've got the dash lines and the swing of the door and it's clipped the wall there nicely so that we can see that door symbol. Go into the settings and I'll show you where that happens there. That's by in under 2D visualization, checking this little box, draw wall lines. And then you assign wall lines to a class. In this case, my class is called dash, and it's an empty class, but it has the attributes of a fine dashed line. And then when you say okay, and then it draws that view with the, the door clipping through the wall and giving us a nice little uh, dash line there. But that's only in top plan view. That's not working in the hidden line view that our viewport is showing. So let me go back to the viewport and see what we need to do there. So here's our viewport that we were just at. So here we're seeing that symbol of it. We're not getting the, the dashed wall lines in here. I might go and select that and find object display here. So let's work first, let's set the door aside for a second. Let's work with getting the top of our lentil here and those two floating objects, these guys over here to appear. So I'm gonna click open that object display and what you need to do is find the class on which those appear. So there it is, set, set is the class where that is. I'm gonna click this 
uh, to select this class, and I'm going to double click the word none or click the button edit. Either one of those will take you to this display. Okay, object display. Here we go. Hidden line, please. Please show that as a hidden line, and I'm going to say OK. And in fact, while I'm here, I'm going to do the same thing with the grid. I'm going to set, set that to hidden line as well. We don't want to do this, but I'll, I'll show you why the grid is not showing. So I'll say OK, and I'll update. So now we get some good things, but some bad things. So I've shown the grid here, but it's interesting to see the grid is actually above the all these objects, but it looks like it's underneath that. Because what we've really done is, by checking this box, we just sort of mirrored the, the objects above that cutting plane. So instead of looking down from the cutting plane, it's now looking up from the cutting plane as well. So it's going to encounter these objects first. So it's basically an upside down view of what we're doing with that grid way up, on, way up above. And we don't want that grid to show, but we could turn it off in the classes. Because it's on its own class, it's easy. We could turn it off here, or we could just not do what I just did by not turning it on. So it's actually you know easy, easier just to not do this step here and leave the grid set to none and then say OK. And then when I update, that grid goes away. So that's good. But I've, I'm close there, except these are solid lines. In fact, they're the same line weight as the regular object lines. And that makes sense because we are showing the looking down from the cutting plane as a hidden line view. And we basically just told it to show uh, looking up from that also as a hidden line view. So it's using the same line weights and fills in the other direction. So it's, it's doing exactly what we told it to do. So we have another step right over here. Pop up on the object display, and I'm going to double click on this again. And I've got to actually deselect a couple of checkboxes here. So I'm going to deselect use object pen style. That's the default attribute that I assigned it back in the design layer. And I'm also going to deselect the object thickness. And you can do color as well if you need to. The pen style here, I'm going to pop that open and select a line type. I'm just going to go ahead with the default short dash, but you could pop open the little fly up uh, resource manager here and select something else. But I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to leave it to a fine line thickness. And then I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So now I've got the set uh, set to that hidden line. I'm going to say OK. And now when I update, now I'm getting closer. So I've got the dashed lines for all of these overhead objects. Let me just show you right while I'm at that, though, what those battlements were about. So I can also go in here and say, don't show me hidden line, but show me dashed hidden line. And I'm going to say, OK, OK. And then when I update here, I get the little crenellations appear in there. And that may be more detail than you want. You may want that. But it's exactly, again, like showing things that are hidden below an object or on the other side of an object when we select dashed hidden line. Uh, but in this case, it's probably busier than you want your plan to, view, to be. We just want to see where that lentil is. We don't really need to, need to see where the battlements are on top. So I'm going to go back up to the object display, and I'm going to just go ahead and set that back from dash to just regular old hidden line, and then say OK, and then again, another update, and they go away. So the last thing we need to deal with here is the door. Door's looking a little weird. So one thing I should let you know is that back in the design layer, I have checked the show 3D open. So what we need to do first of all with this is to de select we need to get rid of the symbol that's on here and that is a 2d component so i'm going to deselect this display 2d components and then when i update that now i've got the 3d door shown open and the hole in the wall so rather than trying to figure out, well, how do you get the wall dash lines to show, just stop thinking about the wall dash lines because that's only working in your top plan view. What we need to do now is do the exact same thing that we've done everywhere else. So I'm going to go back to the object display. And remember, I've got this in a separate class, wall. And I'm just going to go in here and do the exact same thing that I did before. Set this to the line dashes and say OK. And then when I update again, I get the wall dashes back. But not the wall dashes from the door symbol. They're exactly the same wall dashes or the same dash line as everything else that's being shown above the cutting plane. Because the header above the archway in that wall is above the cutting plane. It's showing a dash line there just like it is any other object in there. So the only thing that I haven't been able to do in here is get the swing of the the, of the arc. If you like that swing, which I do, I'm going to go and just draw that in the annotations with the arc tool. And then, you know, you can even set the, uh, oops, wrong one. You can even set the arrow on there if you like that. So now I've got kind of a traditional uh, door symbol there with just one hands-on step. But all this other stuff that you know I used to do back in the day by going over and tracing over things and it was a pain and you know making ground plans had to be this sort of strange hybrid object or whatever it wasn't be able, being able to be completely generated by the section viewport. But now with learning how these little objects over here work, we get some better control 
over what's being drawn above the cutting plane and below the cutting plane. So hopefully that'll make it a little bit more easy for you, at least hopefully this will remind me when I'm forgetting how to do this in a couple of months, how to show objects above the cutting plane properly.